Hey YouTube, my name is Nick, and in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing this item that I ordered from Japan. And without further ado, we're going to get right to opening it. So just going to open the tape. Okay, that's one side and the other. Alrighty, here we go. We've got lots of paper. Ooh, packaged very well. And there it is. Oh wow, that was packaged very, very well. Okay, here's the other part. But as you can see, there we have it. We also have this too. That's part of it. But yes, I now own one of 5,000 uh, Kasumi Chan original Xbox consoles. There were only 5,000 of these made in Japan. There were 5,000 Halo 2 uh, Asia variants of the blue original Xbox console. Oh my god, that looks so beautiful. And there were only 5,000 uh, Canadian uh, Halo 2 original Xbox consoles. Oh my god, that is beautiful. This is absolutely mint. Oh my god. Pristine. So pristine. And this listing also came with the uh, limited edition controller that came bundled with it. Which, by using two hands, I can get out of there. Check that out. Boom. Look at that. This one is a limited edition uh, controller because it has this crystal jewel here. They actually released a similar blue controller, which if I go over here for a sec, uh, which looks like this. This one is not a limited edition controller. Uh, people tend to get uh, this uh, controller confused with the other one, and this one's not limited edition because it has the standard black jewel on it. So going back over here, it came with uh, the controller. But it also, uh, funnily enough, came with um, Xbox 360 AV cables, which are kind of useless, but also uh, it did come with the breakaway cables, just bundled with these, but these are basically useless for the original Xbox because they have a different port. And this also has the uh, this uh, peel still on it, so I would assume that this is in very nice condition. Here's the back of it. And the really nice thing about this system is that by looking at these numbers here, uh, this system is usable in North America without having to do any power supply swap. So for those who don't know, if you buy a PAL region console and want to use it on North American uh, mains, you have to swap the power supply because they use 220 volts, whereas in North America here, we use 120. So I actually bought this console untested, so I have absolutely no clue if it works. So, without further ado, I'm going to hook it up, and we'll see what happens. Alright, so I have it all set up. Um, I actually kept the, uh, the video cable unplugged for a sec because um, I just want to see what happens when I power it. I know I said very confidently that it should work, but I just want to make sure. And before I press this power button right here, I'm just going to satisfyingly pull off this peel. There we go. All right. Here we go. Nice. Perfect. So it's flashing green and orange. And in short, all that means is that um, there's no AV cable, which is perfect. So I can power it up safely. Everything's good. So I'm going to plug in my component cable because I have a component cable, which I custom made. See, there's my setup. It's actually a set of Xbox 360 component cables that have been modified to fit 
the original Xbox plug. And so now without further ado, once I press this button, it'll transition over to the footage that I will screen record. So I'm gonna start recording. I hope it works. Oh, I think I forgot to plug in the actual capture card. Well, let's try that again. So unfortunately, it turns out that this Xbox uh, gives me an error code 7, which a quick Google search says has um, faulty cable. It realizes that, like a faulty cable inside, it realizes that the hard disk drive is there, but it basically doesn't start for some reason. So it looks like I'm going to have to take this apart and uh, mess around a little bit inside. So basically, to get this thing apart, all you have to do is you got to flip the console over, and then you have to take out six screws. Uh, one is under each of these rubber feet and one is hidden under this label and one is hidden up here under this label So you just get a Torx I think it's called and you get a t20 and you lift up the feet uh, It helps if you have a flathead to lift the edge of it Then you can put your screwdriver in there and uh, take out the screws. These rubber feet are stuck on because this has never been taken apart before. At least not until today. Okay. See, I got this one up, and there's one screw right there. top ones and then I'll do these ones. This might possibly trigger everyone but I'm just going to poke my screwdriver through these holes. I'm not going to try to heat it up and peel it. That is the nicer way to do it. like if you took like a heat gun or like um, even maybe a hair dry and you um, pointed the heat all into this area in here you could heat up the sticker so you could pull it back nicely and then stick it back but either way you look at it there's no way of hiding the fact that this would have been opened even if you did it that way. I gotta be careful not to stab myself by accident. Because these are very, very difficult to get off the, for the first time, that is. I think I got it. There we go. No. 
Now we'll do the other corner over here. Ah, there, I did it. I stabbed myself. Ah, God, that hurts. Okay, so I put a bandage on my hand now. You can see it here now. <laughs> that was stupid, but at least I got it open. <laughs> it's nobody's fault but mine, of course. Oops. Almost there. A little more. Okay, so we got four out of six screws out. And now for the controversial part. So there's one right here, right under this little triangle with the electric symbol. So I'm just gonna poke a hole through it. With the screwdriver, there you go. And you turn, and out comes the screw. Okay, and now the last screw before you can take off the lid is under here, if I can find it. And there it comes. There you go. I'll maybe just try to fix this label a little bit. There we go. Now you flip it back over. And all you do is you pull on both sides and you lift up. and it will come apart. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult the first time, but there you go, all four corners, and off comes the lid. So, taking a look at this, you can immediately see there are some pretty old components in here. And what I mean by that is like, hey, wait a minute, this looks like stuff from a Revision 1.0 Xbox. Well, guess what, that's because Despite this console being manufactured in 2004, as this label here denotes, uh, it turns out that the Kasumi-chan consoles were actually 1.0 uh, original Xboxes. So everything down to the motherboard, the typical um, disk drive, the even the hard drive, all of it was all 1.0 based hardware that you would expect. So that's why you see a Thompson drive which is notably the worst disk drive you can possibly get in the original xbox because of how many capacitors are inside of it and that's why you also get this seagate uh, hard drive this really big one but anyway so error code 7 like i said before uh says that there could be a faulty cable so what i might try to do is i'm going to replace the data cable and see if it makes any difference so all i have to do for this is just lift this oh i actually have to go all the way to the motherboard to do that okay but luckily uh, when you're this far in, uh, there's only three more screws you have to remove to get down to the motherboard, which is one of the reasons why I love taking apart the original Xbox, because it is not nearly as difficult or as painful. Okay, I mean, pain aside from me accidentally stabbing myself, but it's not as difficult or as painful as, for example, taking apart an Xbox 360. Those things are hell compared to this. But basically, you just want to rock this left and right, Oh, uh, you know what? It could even be that this was sitting kind of loose because when I pulled on that, it took like 
not much effort to get it out. I would say that the power cable is sitting good because it's pushed all the way in. So maybe I'll just reinsert this and see what happens. Because it's possible that this could have came like that from the factory, maybe? Because it says that it's like, the reason for error code 7 is it knows that the hard drive is there, but it's um, there's a faulty cable. So even if this cable were faulty, the good news is I have many of these, so this shouldn't be a problem. But let's just see what happens if I unplug it and reinsert it. This feels really stiff this bend here uh, on the disk drive um, and this looks like it's secured good so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick it up set it back up and see if it makes any difference so unfortunately after quickly testing it the results were the same so I'm basically gonna go all the way to the motherboard with this one which will allow me to check for the clock capacitor to see if it has any leaks or anything which I'm probably gonna remove anyway because you don't need it in a 1.0 console. In fact, uh, removing the clock capacitor in any of the 1.0 to 1.4 revisions is completely fine. The console will still boot. And the good news is you'd be removing like a major point of failure because the clock capacitors have an issue where they leak after so much time and um, it can damage the motherboard and basically render it useless if it is not taken care of and removed. But essentially to get down to the motherboard, you just have to pull this out of its little like, I guess you could say, um, this plastic piece here, like this hinge or sleeve or whatever you want to call it. You pull that out and then hidden under it is this little screw. So you want to take a T10 and then you can start to unscrew this screw here. Okay. And you pull this out. And then I usually find it helps if you turn it towards you on this side. But to get the this cable out, you just wiggle it left and right, and it comes out. You can pull it out of the way. And then there's this power cable. This I always have difficulty trying to remove. So I usually use like a pair of pliers or something to remove it, uh, this power cable. And it comes out just like that. Uh, it's usually very hard to grip your fingers around it. But then you can pull this up. Okay, and then you can unplug the disk drive power and the cable for it. And now uh, there's two screws holding the disk drive in place. There's one here and there's one on this side, like down here. I'll just lift it up so I can show you better. But yeah, there's one right there. And there's one right down there, if you can kind of see it. Right there. So, after you take out the two screws, you can just lift this up, and it will come straight out. Yeah, I took it out. Okay, this should come straight out. It might just have a little bit of trouble. I've never done it before. Here we go. And there you go. And you can see now the motherboard is exposed and this fan is a very clear sign it's a 1.0 like I stated. So, hmm. Wow, the inside of uh, Japanese Xbox looks kind of different at least with that sticker there. But as you can see, the clock cap is in the same spot all the way over here. This little guy right there. That's the clock cap on a 1.0. And hmm, that looks all right in general. Not even any dust on here. But anyhow, we're going to try replacing this IDE cable because this is supposedly the reason for the error is a bad set of IDE cables, according to the internet. Okay, so I took this one out, and I'll go get a spare one that I have. So this is an IDE cable that I have that I know works. So we're just gonna slot it right in. Then we're gonna mount the disk drive back. I'm just going to 
pull this back for a sec. I'm putting the hard drive back in its spot. You have two arms in the way, but you have to route these cables back through this hole here, and then they go under these little roofs of plastic or whatever. Okay, I routed them all there, and I just gotta readjust this so that it's seated correctly. There we go. Now these go under here. This yellow one is not quite in the right spot. Oh well, it's fine. Um, and then we got the other half of the IDE cable. So hopefully when I plug it in this time, it'll actually boot no problem. And the error code will go away and everything will be fine. That is what we hope. So unfortunately it seems like I'm getting the same problem, but also I noticed under error code 7, it says that this problem can also be fixed by swapping the disk drive. And luckily on the original Xbox, um, the disk drives are interchangeable, they're not married to the motherboard like in the Xbox 360. And luckily I have plenty of disk drives around from various Xboxes I've picked up. So I'm going to try swapping the uh, disk drive next and see what happens. So I mean, considering that this is a Thompson disk drive, it's kind of not really surprising that that would be the problem here especially since this hardware is like 20 years old and like i said the thompson is the worst condition like it's the worst xbox disk drive you could be in possession of um it's not a big deal um so i'm gonna quickly take out so to get the disk drive you have to take out all this stuff again because the disk drive is underneath uh this housing piece here on the that holds the, the hard drive but you have to take this out again. So you do the same process you did before. And I didn't put the screws back into the disk drive tray just in case, so I can just pull it straight out again. Uh, but first I wanna disconnect obviously the power and uh, SATA, or not SATA, the IDE um, data cables. So again, pull it up, lift, and it comes straight out. So for this test, I'm going to use this uh, Samsung uh, disk drive that I have from a 1.6 Crystal Xbox that I have that I made a video on but haven't released yet because I have to dump the EEPROM using a physical tool, which I have not been able to do so, so far, but hopefully I'll be able to get that resolved soon. Um, and I'm using a cheap one. Okay, there we go. I moved this power cable in the way it was preventing it from going down. But... Hopefully, by plugging this one in, it will theoretically work no problem. If I could just get the... There we go. If I could just get the IDE cable into this disk drive. Now we're going to put this in there. Very good. Okay, that's good. Uh, here's the hard drive. Put it back into its spot. Feed the cables through this hole here. There we go. Very good, nice and secure. I corrected this issue. And now we put the data cable back, the IDE data cable that is, back into the stock hard drive. 
And let's see what happens now. I'm just going to flip this around for a sec just to show the clear crystal on the blue front. That's really neat. Anyway, now to test it. So as I stated in my last part of the video, uh, a few months have passed since I uh, had this Xbox and had to swap out the motherboard, but now I'm going to show it working. And you can see as well that it starts to boot up. I'm looking at my capture card, it's, there we go, it's freaking out, but you can see it now in OBS. It'll load Unleash X. And so, um, the disk drive I have in it now is a Phillips, and you can tell by the way the tray is shaped. Uh, there's various shapes for each of the original Xbox drives. I'm going to show that it can read discs as well, so I'm going to put Greg Hastings Tournament Paintball maxed into the disk drive. And I won't close it just yet because I'll show you what the Microsoft dashboard would have looked like in Japanese. So this is what my original Xbox dashboard looks like. Uh, this is running in Unleash X. It is a soft modded Japanese 1.0. And uh, you'll notice that um, the second option below launch disk says uh, launch SBLOC. Uh, SBLOC stands for Steel Battalion Line of Contact. Um, this is my Xbox that I basically use specifically for this game, but I of course can load whatever games I want into the games tab. But I'm just going to quickly show what the MS dashboard would have looked like um, if the hard disk drive were working, assuming it hasn't been modded. And this is what the Microsoft dashboard would look like if it were in Japanese. This is obviously the memory tab. There's my uh, memory unit, which is plugged into the top slot of my special edition controller, which, yes, functions perfectly. So if I pull it out of the top, it also works in the bottom one. So that part works, the memory unit slots on the controller work, but as do all the other inputs. And these are all my save files that I have on here, which shows the various things I've played because this is my hard disk drive after all, and not the one that was originally supposed to be in this console. It's really cool seeing all these uh, titles in Japanese. I can't show the Xbox Live tab because um, I don't have my ethernet cable connected just because of how my recording setup is um, configured. I don't have access to one but I have this disc um, on my hard disk drive. I ripped it. I can try to access it, but I probably can't go that much further. But yeah, so it fails, but you can kind of make it out behind um, the error screen. 
So there's a time, which is kind of incorrect. I mean, it is incorrect, but... Um, there's language, so this is how you can change it to English. I'll show that in a second. Here's the audio. This is video. It's right now set to 4x3 mode. Um, this is the network page. And all the settings are here. And I think that's Xbox Live accounts. This is a password or PIN when you log in. And I can't remember what that one is. And this is just dashboard information. You'll see as it scrolls, you'll see kernel 4034 like it said on the motherboard. And on the hard disk drive, it was also, um, there was a little sticky note or like a sticker on it that said the same thing. See, there you go, kernel 4034 with 5960 as the dashboard, which is the latest. Yep, so that's what the dashboard would have looked like. Um, to back out of the MS Dash and go back to Unleash X, you press left trigger, right trigger, back and black. And now I'm going to close the disk drive. So it says closing. And Unleash X doesn't automatically start the disks unless you tell it to. So now I'm going to press A on launch disk. And it will read it, no problem. I'm just going to play one quick match in this game. My save data for this game is actually on my Crystal Xbox, so um, that's why I have to make a new save here. Yeah, this one is a quick match, I think. I see. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I never actually accessed the exhibition mode, so that's why I didn't quite know what I was doing there. Anyway, so now it should work.
Oh, ran out of bullets. Or, not bullets, but paint. Max points. Wow, they did not even take out one of my teammates. That guy might be a little bit too far away. Ooh. Oh, in the face. Oh. Crap. Okay, there's only two of them left. There we go, that's one. Oh, I didn't realize they were so close. Got him. I think, nope, there's just, I think, one more round and that's it. Assuming I don't lose. Oh, I didn't even realize he was behind that tree back there. Peek, you know you want to. Do it. Peek. Oh, wrong side. Did that guy move? One's back there. Oh, that's the last one. Got him. And there you go. All right. So that wraps up this video. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.